Hey guys, it is Nibscape here and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be going over my top 5 free to play money making methods. This is my alt account and recently he has been locked in free to play for a series. The series is called Escape Free to Play, link is on the screen right now if you want to check that out. Basically my alt account's membership ran out and I decided to make a series where each episode we would look at a different free to play money making method and then at the end work out exactly how much profit we made and how long it would take to get a bond. So I decided to round it up quite nicely now with a top 5 and work out exactly what the best money makers of free to play that I found were. Along with this I'm also going to be adding links in the description to each one of these money making methods so you can have a little look and use it as a guide yourself. So anyway let's jump straight into this top 5 starting with number 5. Ogress Warriors and Ogress Shamans. So to find the Ogresses, they are located in the relatively new area of the Cursor's Cove. There are a couple different dungeons, I'll go more detail about that in my guide. However, I will go over the profit per hour, and the profit per hour we made was 194k, which honestly for free to play is very, very good. However, there are some pros and cons which I will go over now. So for the pros is you do get a lot of combat XP and combat XP is definitely going to help you when you do get your membership and obviously when you start doing Slayer and things like that and even PVM you're going to be making a lot of money so it is a good way to start getting your combat stats up and making some decent cash along the way however there are some cons to go with this. So for the cons, unfortunately there is relatively high requirements to do this very successfully. Obviously to just do them anyway you only need to completion of the quest, the curses, curse, which is really easy. However this dungeon is highly populated and it's going to be very hard for you to get kills. The way around this is to complete the quest Dragon Slayer which is definitely a harder quest to do. You're going to need relatively decent combat stats along with a lot of quest points and some other quests completed. However, this is definitely 100% worth it because the cave you get access to with this is a lot better and is, is what I used in the video. And yeah, 194k is very, very good. So uh, not bad for the first money maker. In number four, we have collecting nature runes. So to collect nature runes, you do have to venture out into the wieldy. So this is a high risk but high reward. In the hour we made a total of 198k which honestly is very very good for free to play however as I have said it is in the wieldy so there is a lot of risk. So we're going to go over the pros first so pro wise obviously you are going to be getting quite a bit of magic experience we will be constantly casting telekinetic grab and the xp rates aren't too bad to be honest. So obviously with that in mind, you're also going to be making a lot of money. This is very, very good money per hour. However, it can vary ever so slightly depending on how many PKers you come across. If you come across quite a few PKers, you're not going to be getting nowhere near as much money as I did. However, there is a chance you could come across none for an hour and you're going to be making a lot more money than I did. I came across about three or four, I believe, in the video. It's been a while since I shot that now. But honestly wasn't too bad at all. Obviously with the cons, it's high risk. You're going to be going out into the wieldy and you're going to be risking a lot of lore runes, you're going to be risking all the nature runes you've collected and there's a lot of danger you could die. However, you've got to remember it is free to play. It's not like someone's just going to come up behind you, AGS spec, one hit dead. So uh, obviously I was relatively decent combat level when I went into this and I didn't really have to worry about singular PKs. Obviously I ran away from them. It is multi-combat, so you would have to worry about groups, especially clans. However, they ain't going to be doing major damage on you, so you could still easily escape. And overall, I know it is high risk, but 100% worth the money in my opinion. As long as you don't take too many laws with you either, you're not going to be risking too much in the terms of things anyway. So I do still highly recommend this method. So in number three, we have buying feather packs. So basically this entails going to Gerald's fishing store in Port Rim, and then we buy 10 packs of feathers. We open them automatically, by the time they're finished his stocks are replenished and then we go back and repeat. Now this was very very surprising just how much money we made. Over the hour we actually made a total profit of 225k. 
So absolute insane amounts of money. However, there are some cons, which I'm going to go over in a minute. But first, we'll go over the pros. So it was semi AFK, which is a massive pro. So when you automatically open the 10 packs, it does have a little bit of downtime when you don't have to pay any attention. So very, very AFK, which is good. And the major positive is just how much money you make from this. 225k per hour is very, very good for free to play. Now this draws me onto the cons. So one of the big cons is you need a relatively decent sized cash tack to even get started. You're obviously gonna have to buy quite a few packs of feathers and each pack does cost a fair bit of money. So you're definitely gonna want a nice sized cash stack going into this. You can't just jump straight into this one, unfortunately. And the biggest con, unfortunately, it takes a very long time to sell these at the GE. You need to sell them for free GP. You can't sell them for any less, otherwise you'll make yourself a loss. So selling them for free GP at the GE does take a very long time. For me, it took around about 30, 30 plus hours to sell one hour's worth, which is a very long time. However, you have to bear in mind, it is a very, very good money maker. 225K per hour is extremely good for free to play. And this is definitely worth maybe chucking into another money maker. So if you're gonna do one of the other ones, maybe just every now and again, do an hour of this, just to top up your funds a little bit, would definitely help towards getting your first bond. And overall, I definitely recommend doing this, but mainly as just an add-in to something you're already doing. In number two, we have Wines of Zamorak. So basically for this method, we telegrab Wines of Zamorak from the temple near the mind altar. So this was a relatively easy, straightforward method. A little bit of world hopping gets a little bit annoying sometimes, but overall very, very good. And the money was absolutely insane. Over the course of one hour, we actually made a total profit of 240K, which is very, very good for free to play. Obviously we'll go over the pros. So one of the big pros is you're actually gonna be getting a fair bit of magic XP as well, which is always good when you wanna get into members. It's nice to have things like high alchemy and stuff like that available to you. So a little bit of magic XP while trying to get your first bond is not a bad thing at all. And obviously another big benefit of this is just how much money you can make. 240K profit is very, very, very good. So uh, yeah, that is a massive pro. Now, looking at the cons, the only big con that I can see is just how busy the worlds could be. When I started this moneymaker early on in the morning, it was very, very quiet. So I was actually able to get a couple nice worlds in a row, and I was able to hop between them with no competition whatsoever. However, towards the end of the hour, it started getting a little bit more populated, a lot more busy, and it was getting harder to find some worlds, so that could definitely decrease the amount of money you can make. And if you came on at peak times, you could end up maybe even struggling to find any worlds free, which obviously then is going to definitely decrease the amount of money you can make. So that is definitely worth bearing in mind. However, if you do this during like quite low hours, you're definitely going to be able to see some insane amounts of cash. So I do still recommend going for this method, but if it is looking too busy, maybe go on to a different one. However, still very, very good money and worth thinking about. And in the number one big boy spot, we have selling bows. So this was actually suggested to me in the comment section, so very grateful for that. But basically, all we do for this method is we buy various long bows, short bows from the GE, and then we sell them to Brian and his archery shop in Remington and make a very decent markup per bow. I was selling around about five bows per world, hop in and then so forth, all the way through them, and we made some very, very good profit. We actually made a total profit of 356K in one hour, which was very, very good. And honestly, quite surprising, you can make that with very little requirements. So obviously the big pro is you don't need any requirements whatsoever. Obviously, no stats. All we are doing is buying from the GE and then selling to a shop. So, yeah, extremely impressed with this money-making method. And obviously, the big benefit of this is just how much money we can make because the money was absolutely insane. 
but then that draws us on to the cons. And now the only real big con with this is you need a lot of money to start this method. I would suggest around about 800k really to do this properly for an hour. And that is a lot of money to come across, but it's 100% worth it. When you have the money, you're going to be making some very, very good cash per hour. And you're going to make it all back relatively fast anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. And then the only other con, kind of a con, is that you don't get any XP, like so you don't get any magic or combat XP with a lot of the other ones. You are getting a little bit, so it is good money though, which probably makes up for that fact. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up the top five money makers I came across in my series. And now I'm going to go over my personal opinion on what I would do if I was going for a bond. So me personally, if I was going to be going for a bond, which to be fair, I actually am, that's what I'm doing now. How I'm going to be doing it is I'm probably going to incorporate three of these money makers. The first one being the Ogre of Shamans. That's the main one I would probably focus on. Obviously, you're getting a lot of combat stats, which is going to help you when you get into members anyway. And the money is still really, really good. So I can't really complain of that. Alongside of that, I'd also be doing the feathers, collecting the feather packs. Maybe doing like an hour every other day and then selling the feathers just as like a little bit of a side earner. That doesn't take too much time. And honestly, it will add up massively. And probably when I get down to the last one to two mil to go to get my final bond, I'd probably just switch to selling bows because honestly, it won't take that long. Three, four hours and you'll be there with your first bond and then you can get into membership. And that's when the real fun begins, when you've got to start sustaining that bond. And, well, which is relatively easy, because as soon as you hit membership, there's so many money makers available that you're going to be easily sustainable and you're going to be making tons of money and then progressing your account massively. So, yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, because it helps the channel out massively. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.